Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman. I am your GPR professor from LearnGPR.com and the president of Bigman Geophysical. Um, I want to take a quick moment to clarify some comments I made in a video the other day about post-tension cable compared to rebar and whether or not GPR can discriminate against them, um, particularly when you're using cross-polarization of the antennas or as some of the commenters on the, on the video sort of suggested maybe um, you know, maybe it's more accurate to call it perpendicular uh, uh, polarization. Uh, we have a normalized polarization, normal how you'd collect it, and then you turn it 90 degrees perpendicular to the direction uh, of, of data acquisition, and that would be perpendicular. Um, anyway, in the, in the, in the video, um, I wanted to clarify a, a couple things because, you know, there was a, quite a bit of a positive response to it. People thought it was, you know, helpful and useful. And then there was a little bit of negative response to it, um, which, uh, maybe warranted. I'm certainly not immune from um, mistakes or anything like that. So I'm the you know, first one to admit it and, and I'm always trying to learn. Anyway, I want to clarify the position. So first of all, one thing I didn't do in the video is talk about the general use of cross-polarized or perpendicular polarized uh, antenna um, when using it in concrete scanning. And so the primary function of, of using this cross-polarization method is to attempt and identify reinforcements below a wire mesh. And the reason is a wire mesh is often uh, tight and uh, will get reflections uh, from the GPR signal um, and will shadow things below it. And so reorienting your antenna by 90 degrees will reorient the footprint of the signal as it comes out and may, will help or can help you see uh, um, basically between the mesh and have a better shot or maybe a better shot at identifying reinforcements below that wire mesh. So I, I didn't mention what the normal use of cross polarization is in um, uh, uh, concrete scanning and maybe that's where some of the confusion came as well. So that's number one is typically the normal use is to assist the technician in uh, uh, visualizing reinforcements that are uh, deeper than the wire mesh because it can create a lot of reflection at that mesh, especially if it's really tight. So the second thing I want to clarify is, um, is whether or not GPR used in cross polarization can discriminate against uh, or between rebar, you know, uh, 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 and post tension cables. And so in the video, I sort of, su well, I, I suggested that, um, that that it may or may not. So my, my first answer then is going to be, uh, I'm not sure, okay, if it can discriminate between those two or not. However, I will stick to my, my point in the first video, which is that I caution everybody to use a technique like this um, carefully. And if there are clues or information that cross-polarizing can give you, which may help you make an educated guess about a response coming from a reinforcing bar versus a post-tension cable, um, then use it cautiously. Okay, that's all I'm, uh, what, what I'm trying to say, is use it cautiously. And, um, and so can it discriminate? Um, I would be careful. That's my answer. Can it discriminate? Let's say I'm not sure. Um, I would suggest that that maybe you know that maybe rebar does show up or doesn't. Maybe post tension cable does show up or doesn't. Um, however, be careful when applying a technique like this, or make sure if you're hiring somebody out who's going to use it that you uh, um, or that 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 they are uh, you know using terminology such as this is helping us uh, make an educated guess. So I don't want to come down as disparaging. I just want to uh, make it clear and on record that um, that I would caution folks. Uh, uh, to take something like this and use it um, sort of as black and white. You know, that one response is a PT and, and the other response would be a, 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 a rebar. And I'm going to apply this then beyond concrete, which is in any cases using GPR, be careful of how you're, be careful of your terminology because um, can GPR distinguish between a gas pipe and, you know, and, and, and some other type of buried facility, uh, pipe or utility? Um, it's difficult to tell that difference because GPR measures contrast, not composition. And 
you know, there might be clues from polarity, for example, that can suggest whether or not a pipe is metal or not, or whether or not the pipe is filled with air or some other kind of fluid. Um, those are estimated guesses. And until there's uh, excavation uh, um, or verification, you know, through a destructive method, uh, uh, generally, then it's really tough to do. So I want to end with this on a very positive note. The work people are doing um, in trying to come up with new techniques to maximize GPR's potential, I think is really fantastic. And keep experimenting. You know, keep trying new things. Keep trying to use GPR as much as you possibly can in the most diverse use cases as you possibly can and, um, and, and keep innovating. And I can absolutely appreciate the movements that people are making in trying to expand the reach that GPR uh, has. Just be careful to not try to force GPR into doing something that it's not necessarily capable of doing. And I'm not saying that the division between PT and rebar is one that it's not capable of doing. What I'm saying is, um, is, is use it cautiously. So hope this was helpful. I hope this clarified some of my uh, other comments the other day. Um, and uh, uh, you know, go to learngpr.com. Check out our online training. I know a lot of people sort of have limits on on what they can do as far as travel. We've, put up quite a few uh, additional webinars and tutorials. Go to bigmangeo.com and check out our um, services, uh, our collaborative services, um, project support, our uh, equipment rentals, uh, and so forth. We'd love to hear from you. If there's a topic you want us to address on this channel or in a webinar type of training like that, please let us know, comment below, and um, we wish you nothing but the best. Stay safe, stay healthy, uh, and we'll see you in 2021.